episode three of the Supercharger series. If you haven't already checked out episodes one and two, I suggest you do that. On episode three, we're gonna be removing all of this stuff and getting the Supercharger put in. And I'm gonna walk you through the major steps using this checklist that I created. Yeah, I'm gonna refine that a little bit more as I go through this process. Some of these items have been taken care of already. For example, the boost gauge has been installed. I've already installed the split second enricher as well. If you've watched episode one and two, you've heard me say repeatedly that there are many ways to do this. I'm just sharing with you the way I'm gonna do it. Some guys are gonna run injectors, some guys are gonna run in the intercooler, some guys are gonna run the pulley that comes with the supercharger. It just depends on your setup and what you wanna do. This is applicable to the 3UZ as well and other Lexus and Toyota V8s. I'm gonna to try to stop and talk about key areas and torque values and what I'm doing and hopefully in the end, we'll have a vehicle that starts up Fuel pumps right here. Probably a shut off right away. And make sure you have a cover on this because you're going to be bringing metal things like this around, then you don't want to short it out. to get your smooth idler on, this is what you're gonna need. An M10 by 1.25 by approximately 45 millimeter bolt. So when you go to take your throttle body off, you have to be a little bit rough with it and be sure to push down on this upper radiator hose and it'll slide off those studs right there. And then you should see something like this. You're gonna need that gasket if you didn't get a new one. So make sure that you take care of that. I might just leave it on there for now. We have to deal with these coolant lines now that run through the throttle body. I was tempted to try this just because I think it would look pretty cool and clean. I think I'm gonna to stick to my original plan and cut this thing. Okay, once you have those fasteners and nuts out, you should be able to move this thing. I'd put on some safety glasses. Oh yeah, there's some fuel. Hose clamp on, barbed fitting to 6 a.m. Beautiful, right there. So this whole unit should lift out at this point. I was double checking to make sure that everything was disconnected there. Everything's clear, yes. So we're gonna do the starter, the knock sensors. Let's get these old gaskets off. I'm not gonna ruin them, just in case I had to reuse them. Highly recommended that you get new ones. Four studs that you're gonna be removing. Rear coolant crossover off. Okay. Quite a bit of fluid is or coolant is going to come out when you lift this up. Oh, you might want to put something underneath your car because I can hear it splashing around underneath my car right now. 14 millimeter wrench on there, and then take a 16 like this and use it to break that bolt free. On this other side is under this plastic cover. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. I 
you have to take a long screwdriver and push this plastic piece aside and then you can get your wrench on it and just go slow turns. So if you lift up on that thing, it really helps. There it is. Next, we have to take these studs out with the special tool. I'm gonna go for that one first because that one looks to be the most difficult Time to do the knock sensors because if you put the starter in it makes it a little more difficult to get this one out so let's just do the knock sensors now that's all they are right there factory 170,000 plus miles and I only recommend standard motor parts or OEM for knock sensors. You're gonna pay a pretty penny for some reason on these. You don't wanna get this wrong and you don't wanna have to go back and do them again. Just get it done right. Plug it in. Be really, really gentle because if you have a broken wire, you're gonna have all sorts of misfire problems. And you can see that this protective cover is starting to come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and put some new stuff on to protect it. So I got a big half inch ratchet back here and it gives you much more leverage and it totally works. And now, just to torque it, I'm gonna have to switch sides over here to the other side of the car, but this works great. Don't forget the little fastener that goes on the back of this plastic thing right here. It's also kind of a pain. You're gonna have to pull it towards you, fish it through that hole, and then thread it. Do one more check of your starter connections, your bolts, and next, we're gonna be cleaning off and replacing this coolant crossover. And if you have any weird floating bits in your coolant, now would be the time to get rid of those. You can just soak it with a paper towel like this. And usually the bits will come out. Felpro 35941, same part number for each side. Make sure you orient it properly. There is a right and a wrong way to do this. Make sure your coolant crossover is clean. Put these nuts back on. The nuts on the crossovers are 13. Well, must have done pretty well. The late manifold and top plate test fit, and you're gonna hear the reason that that's happening is there's actually some contact here with this coolant crossover nut, not this one, but the other one, right under there. So what we need to do is actually grind that down just a hair so that it does not do this. This is the interference that's occurring right here. You need to grind down this stud flush with that nut right there. You just bang on this a little bit with a hammer it'll come loose, but make sure you have rags down here in the valley. It seems to drip down and around and to your skid plate and underneath the car. You're gonna have to do FIPG here. This might explain why I had some leakage going on. The last stud. Man, this tool worked good, you guys. Look at that. You don't have to do that two nut trick. This thing just takes it right out of there. And that's why I took that crossover off so you can get the right angle on it. It's that time again. Same part number as before. The FIPG is applied.
next, you clean up these gasket mating surfaces and make sure a bunch of junk doesn't go down in your intake side of your head. Here we have it, it's nice and cleaned up. Welcome to day two of the supercharger job. Today, I'm gonna do the adapter install and I'm gonna try to get the supercharger on and all the fuel lines ran. It's gonna be an exciting day, so let's get started. This is your last chance to double check all your connections, make sure all your bolts are torqued, wires are tucked. We're gonna go ahead and set these intake manifold gaskets on here. I did a pretty thorough cleaning on the intake ports. They were very, very dirty. I have been utilizing these elate instructions, which are available online. I printed mine off and my checklist. Next, we're gonna install the long M8 by 55 hex cap screws. There's 10 of them, so five and five. And be sure to use the washers and some anti-seize on the threads per Elate's instructions. We'll be torquing these to 13 foot-pounds uh, per Elate instructions, but we'll be using a hand tighten method and then a crisscross pattern as we go. So I had a little bit of interference with this right here. So what I did was I took the 10 millimeter bolt out and that gave me more play this way with the adapter. When I was turning it by hand, it wasn't threading. So these are the kind of things you just need to pay attention to. Doing this all by hand again. So I'm gonna move this just slightly. There we go. Get the threads to catch. If you have any worry about your gasket placement, you can actually look inside this adapter and you can see the gasket in there. So you can make sure that you didn't somehow mangle it and put it on incorrectly. Everything's torqued down to 13 crisscross pattern and then I went down each one to make sure they were torqued. So that thing is good to go, installed. You're gonna leak fuel. So be ready, just let it kind of, shouldn't be much. And what you'll see here is this hard line starts to come up. Don't lose these washers that are in here, especially if you've replaced your dampers like I have. I will not be running dampers any longer, but I want to save my setup. Now we're gonna take this 4AN straight fitting and it's gonna go flat end into the rail itself. You might wanna do this before you put in the injectors. I'm not sure why I did it in this order, but make sure you have your washer on there. You're gonna to torque that down and then later we're gonna have those 90 degree 4AN elbows with barbed ends. They're gonna go and attach to this flared end here. We should be ready to put these into the supercharger adapter plate. You're gonna have to figure out your elbow, your 90 degree elbow, because this wire loom is in the way. I think that the best way to do it is to route it towards the back and then we'll have the fuel feed curve around and feed that elbow. This time I left the injectors off the rail and I'm gonna put the straight 4AN fitting with flared end on with the flat side down. It's gonna be a 19 millimeter wrench. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, but tight enough. About right there, feels good. Now you're ready to put the injectors in after you lube up the O-rings. And then drop your fastener through so it holds and then get the other one. And we are gonna put it in there like that to drop it through, line up the holes and now you can shake your reel a little bit. Just careful, be careful with it so it snaps down onto those O-rings that you lubed up. Hand tighten these a little bit. Feels good. We're gonna attach the 90 degree elbows to this. And what I'm using here is this Forma gasket stuff. It's probably not necessary. I don't want any fuel leaks. So I'm gonna do this on each side. Just don't get it up on that flared end. And it's prone to leak out of this right here. So I'm gonna put some sealant on that and run it in. The sealant is applied.
off camera, I used a 19 millimeter wrench and held this in place and gave it a little torque there. Now I need to get the straight 4AN fittings to barbed ends onto this here. Put some sealant on this, on these threads, and then put those on right now. Pro MS96110 gasket will go on like that and then we are ready to mount that supercharger up. Before you get overexcited, you gotta remember I have an oil catch can and I need to run that PCV, extend it all the way around to the back side of the supercharger for the PCV port. Additionally, the EVAP line, which is right here, needs to go to the back of the supercharger and as you can see it's not going to reach. I'm going to have to use some barbed fittings to extend both of those lines before you just throw that supercharger on and bolt it down. EVAP connects to the T and then this line here is going to come all the way back and around to here. I'm going to have to put an extension on this. I had to cap this large port. The only thing I could find to work was a power outlet. Make sure it's capped and secured, which this is. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to blow off and it's not going to get sucked in. So well, that is the configuration that I'm going to utilize. And then boost gauge port is right there. This is the uh, H5. I'm just gonna finger tighten these. This is gonna be an H6 again. Don't have to torque this all the way. The main purpose of this is to make sure that we can get this cable routed properly here. This is where you're gonna take your bracket off, use two 14 millimeters on these jam nuts, go opposing ways, and then you'll take your OEM bracket out. This is the beams one that I recommended in episode one, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Here's what I'm doing. I am using one giant zip tie to kind of tack this thing in place. So this is a cube speed shifter thing that I had from my manual swap sitting around. I don't have that in episode one. You're gonna have to come up with some creative stuff here. This is the Beams Toyota bracket that I've routed the cabling jam nuts through it. Here I have the cable installed on the throttle body. It's very loose and I'm gonna show you where it's loose. The slack is at the top of the pedal right where the spotlight is up there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a trick to take up that slack on the pedal itself. I have to get that bracket just right on that elbow before I do that on the pedal. Don't rush this part, okay? You need to get this correct on the throttle body because that is your pedal feel and it's also a safety measure. If that thing breaks, you're gonna have no throttle. Not a good day. You need to extend these connectors to the new throttle body location. The soldering iron out do some clean wire jobs and run some of that protective plastic loom while I wait for this thing to set up. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up, protect it, and that one will be done. I'll do that one tomorrow. Welcome to day three of the supercharger install. I wanted to show you what my tacked up beams throttle body bracket looks like after sitting overnight I still have zip ties in place to make sure it stays. This is what you're going to see. You can speed up the cure time with this high temperature JB Weld by applying heat to it. You can take it from 24 hours to one hour. I'm getting closer and closer to getting this thing done. I need to extend some additional wiring today. I've already done it here. Now I need to extend this and I also need to extend this a little bit. All goes to the throttle body. All wiring has been extended. You're going to have to measure. There's one that goes all the way up and around to where the cable is going to hit on the throttle body. These aren't all the same length. I think at this point the, the next step would be to get the Elite throttle body adapter remounted back up and then the throttle body mounted back up. I don't want to put any pressure on that new bracket just because it needs a good cure time. Oh, so I'm gonna route my intake system now. Quick intermission here. 
I suggest go ahead and take care of your one step colder or two step colder plugs. You'll have a lot more room to work with over there. Throttle body is all bolted up. So now we can start checking our routing. A few things worth noting, you can delete the power steering idle up feature. I just put a golf tee in there and then clamped it. This here, it used to go on top of the intake manifold and then fresh air for bank two, you're gonna have to route that to your intake somehow. So first I'm gonna get it all routed up the intake and then I'll figure out how I'm gonna port that. And now I'm cutting my reducer. That's the angle you cut it at. But this is on my parts list in episode one. And this is also on my parts list. And as you can see, it lines up pretty well. Now this thing is stuffed pretty far down in here, right there. We do have some trim opportunity here. I could trim this a little bit. No hose clamps right now, because I'm just fitting it up. Just keep messing with it. Rotate this, cut this if you have to a little bit. This will fit and it looks pretty good. Clearance is good under there, no hitting. So the T would be here. The other side is gonna go down to this EVAP. Good. There we go. Got a little extension, we've got a T, and then this thing is going to run. Put the uh, stock radiator hose back on, just so you can see why we talk about clearances. That's basically touching. I guess if you don't have another hose, you could pull this out a little. I mean, I don't recommend it, but that gives you a little more clearance. But if you push it all the way to the stop, you're right up against that belt. And this is the upgraded radiator hose. So it's shoved all the way down to the back of the housing there. And there's absolutely no clearance issues. Very thankful that my friend send, sent this to me. Primitive ways to get your boundaries here. You can see that the pencil put a mark on it right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing in the same spot on the back side of the pulley. And that should give me the range to cut on this. I took this all the way down to the skin and we still have contact here. So my options are to grind down this lip with the belt off and everything. I can remove the snout, which is a huge pain because all the oil spills out everywhere and replace it with the other pulley. We also have to keep in mind the flex from the engine. They torque this way. So they want to lift on the driver's side. I probably look tired. Got to come up with a solution on this. I'm at the machine shop in the parking lot and I've just picked up the pulley. I wanted you guys to see what it looks like. So you can see the, the lip has been taken down all the way to the ribs, <laughs> but it looks pretty cool actually like this. I kind of like it. And unfortunately I'm gonna have to take the snout off. So I'm gonna have to suck the fluid out 7.3 ounces as much as I can get. And then I'm gonna have to break the seal and oil is inevitably gonna come out. So I'm gonna have to have some rags down there. Mighty vac with a smaller tube on it into the snout. And then what you want it to do is to bend way down inside of there. And then you pump the, get some vacuum going. And then there you go. It's a smaller pulley installed. You don't really need that bolt, but I'll put it back in later. It's dry fit right now, which means there's no oil in the snout and these are not torqued down. They're just tight. The highest part of this now is the belt itself. And you can see it's in the center of the eight ribs because it's a six rib belt. Secure your cable in this new bracket and then you're gonna tighten it with the 14 millimeter wrench. You'll have plenty of slack to work with to get it re-hooked up onto this throttle body. Up down to there. Now you can see all this slack and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up that slack at the pedal. So I need to take up just about an inch of slack. If I can put a split into this, this is the uh, old fuel injector rail spacer, it would be pretty much perfect. I need just a smidge more, so I'm gonna use some rubber hose. I'm gonna cut the rubber hose and then I'm gonna slice a little slit into it and that'll give me the little extra that I need. The slack is taken up, I'm gonna wrap it in tape so it those don't fall off of the cable. 
but that's what it should look like right there. Pedal is nice and tight. Feels actually really nice too. And then you can make adjustments at the jam nut. Yeah, so it feels like it's pulling the throttle open just a touch. So what I'll go ahead and do is, is loosen this. You want to run the Walro 255 fuel pump in your Lexus GS. There's some things you're going to have to do. First of all, you're going to have to get all the way to the filter assembly, take apart the housing, all that. You're going to have to trim that right there. See how that lip's there? That lip interferes with the Walro when you go to put it in. It hits right here on this housing. You're going to have to change the wiring also, which I've already done because the OEM plug won't work with the wall bro. Stagger your solders, make sure you shrink wrap it and all that stuff. Here it is, trimmed. You can see I did half of it because that's the half that hits the uh, top of the wall bro. Look how this fits, fits just fine. And that's really what you care about is you care about the seal here and the seal at the top here when it presses up against the filter housing. My suggestion is to take that quantum grommet, lube it up a little bit with some, some of this stuff and shove it up into the filter here. Then you're gonna take your fuel pump and you're gonna shove that in there. So you might take like a wood dowel or something and push on this and then the barbed nipple will fit right up in there once you assemble this back together again. but I'm gonna back off because my AFR, so I'm gonna watch it. See, they hit 13, that's not good. Don't want that. I got the Neo maxed out 25% from 2000 to Redline. I think that the stock injectors are not up to the test because I'm in, tw in the 12s in my AFR, so. 12.2 right there. You really wanna be 11 to 11.5. I mean, it still goes really well. But. Well, there you have it guys, running a little too lean for comfort on my AFRs. So I've ordered the 330cc injectors and they should be here in time for episode four, where I'm gonna talk about tuning these things properly. So thank you for joining me on episode three. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate your support. I look forward to seeing you on episode four when we get this thing all tuned up. Come